Time to recognize someone else who is here tonight for the banquet. Butch Fowler, childhood friend of Bubble Break.
eyes.
up the introduction some here. Judge and I'm going to introduce you. There's your speaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I saw you at the ballpark today talking to Rick, and I said to somebody, you know, that guy looks like Bruce Bryant. Well, there's a lot of stories about Bobo, and they're kind of Buck Bailey, Bobo Brayton stories, but the thing that I remember a lot was uh, one time when uh, we were uh, having, he used to coach the Frost basketball for me at that time, and, and I was up there trying to help him, listening to him mostly, and he had some kid in there that was working really hard, running around like crazy, but not getting much done, and Bobo came up with one of those pet expressions that he has, it, to cover all situations, he said, Sonny boy, he said, you play like a mad dog in a meat house, right, which was typical of what's going on, a lot of exertion and no result. And that's kind of Bobo. That's the kind of the way Bobo is. He gets the message across any way he can. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Get that off you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your dinner. Necessarily need to be a funny one, I guess. I guess it could be something that uh, you recall during uh, your time as a player. Let me think about it here. Okay. Who's uh, this is uh, this is going to your TV audience? Yeah, this will go for our TV audience. And actually, if mm -hmm. you just had to stand back mm -hmm. here real quick. And there we go. Let me think about it. <laughs> Usually, everyone has a quick thing that they they know. You know, right off the bat. Sometimes I guess it's been around Not so many that. Uh, let me think of. Um, hmm. Got to study these uh, these stories carefully here. <laughs> think about uh, Bobo, I think about when I first came over to Washington State and uh, as a 17-year-old uh, young person, Bobo seemed like a kind of a gruff, authoritarian sort of person who uh, gave what you might call immediate sort of feedback if uh, things weren't going well. And uh, I think I, I started to relax a little more around Bobo when I saw the way that his kids reacted to him because uh, Fritzy and Herb were, you know, like 10 and 12 at the time. and. Uh, uh, Fritzy often needed a little uh, correcting and choking and a few other things, but uh, uh, Bobo would holler at them and, and discipline them and uh, just sort of roll off their backs like water off a duck and the next minute he'd be giving them a big hug and uh, I thought, well, geez, that's, uh, that's the way it is around here. You know, it's, uh, in my Norwegian background when we'd holler at each other uh, we'd be mad for a week but with Bobo you just say it you get it out and it's all over with and and I found out that that's just the way Bobo is I mean with his family and with his players so uh, you see him uh, with a lot of emotion he kind of wears it on his sleeve but uh, and he'll give you a big hug uh, after he's gotten gotten it all out of his system so that's uh, that's, that's what I think uh, think of when I think of Bobo okay. fantastic Thank you very much. Okay. Enjoy your dinner. Oh. Okay. Uh, what's the funniest thing you ever recall about Bobo? Well, one of the things that I enjoy uh, about Bobo, and he makes you laugh, is his ability to handle a situation when you're hungry, they've just closed the buffet, and you can see Bobo go in there at 2 in the afternoon when they close it, and the man can get the whole team in there. They're a little light on chicken, and he has a way of dancing through the whole thing, and we always laugh our way back onto the road, and, and uh, so we've had some good road trips. Road trips with Bobo are a delight because Bobo has always thought of us first, 
and him second. How about what's the most uh, memorable type of thing? Well, you got to remember, uh, I grew up in Pullman and had the luxury of being around Bobo when I was 12 years old as a bat boy, and then him teaching me how to play the game young. And uh, I think the, the most important thing that I like to express is that uh, he's always been my best friend as a baseball friend. And I can count on him, and uh, and he can always count on me, too. Fantastic. All right. That'll work. Thank you very much. All right. Good enough. Have a good dinner. Okay. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, what's the funniest thing you recall about this? Well, actually, uh, the funniest thing, do you want me to tell my name, too? Does that count? Sure, I'd like. Yeah, but I'm Hal Brunstad. Anyway, yeah, about the funniest thing is my son Kevin plays, and uh, we were down in Lewiston watching the game. I played, actually, too, in the 60s. And I'm watching the game down there. My wife and I are sitting down, and Kevin's up to bat, and Bobo's trying to get his attention. And so we're all sitting there very intense, looking down there, and all of a sudden I hear Bobo yell, Hell! My name's Harold, and Kevin's up to bat. So that was the start of the deal. At least it shows you something about the history of this game. I got one other one I'll tell you. We're playing Stanford, and Stanford came up there, and it was kind of beneath their dignity to play the Cougars for the championship. It was 1965, and the first game we went 2-1. to one. The second game, uh, we're in there, and they're still chipping on us. They got big mouths. We don't say a word to them. Mm -hmm until in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, we're ahead 13 to one, and we say, we get to so tired of beating you guys day after day. That's it. Fantastic. Let me get that off of you. Uh, Leonard! <laughs> Tell me when we're on and what you want. You're okay. gonna ask me questions. Okay. You ready to go? Yep. Okay. Uh, what's the funniest thing you ever remember about going? Well, there are so many funny things that maybe I can't tell in front of a camera. But uh, I like to tell the time that uh, Chuck uh, claimed he could run a six-minute mile because that's what we uh, said that the players had to run. I didn't realize he had broken a record in a football uniform during his football days. So I go out and time him for half a mile. He runs it in three minutes. I said, hey, all you have to do is now go two more laps at the same time. He quite quit right there. Never ran again, and uh, we had a lot of uh, stories up in Alaska when we played together, a lot of stories for seven years when we shared an office, and he masqueraded as an assistant basketball coach, and I kind of masqueraded as an assistant baseball coach, and I'm not sure either one of us was uh, really doing a job. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much. Caught in a hair rage, World War II. Thank
This is an evening of honors. My name is Roger Kelly, and I'm the director of the Crimson Company. We've decided that you need honorary membership in the Crimson Company. We don't think that only the athletic group should be represented here tonight. So I'll read this as we give this to you. Honorary membership, be it known to all that read this declaration that on this, the 23rd day of the fourth month of the 1994th year of our Lord, honorary membership to the Washington State University Crimson Company show choir is hereby granted to Coach Bobo Brayton. His vocal skills, his demonstrated volume, and his ability to render a hearty version of Take Me Out to the Ball Game does hereby uphold the principles of the elite that have received this merited resignation, or whoops, recognition. <laughs> get to uh, basically what he's meant to college baseball, okay. if you don't mind. That would, that would be fantastic as well. That would be fantastic as well. Pretty good. You ready? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Well, I think Bobo's obviously been a great uh, asset to college baseball. When you look through the, the records and his accomplishments, uh, uh, he stands in line with uh, uh, Rod Dato and Ron Frazier at Miami, meaning as much to this program at Washington State as they did for their their universities and uh, he's done so many different things over the years that uh, he's always been a class act always had a different funny story always had a smile on his face a great person great family and uh, he deserves nothing but the best thank you very much okay